Hi, it's Linda with No Thrills ASMR. I thought today maybe we could just sort of flip through this vintage. <laughs> I don't know, can I call it? It's from 2002. March of 2002. So that is, holy smokes, it is what, 22? Can that be right? <laughs> 22 years ago? <laughs> That's so crazy. That doesn't seem that long ago. So I thought we'd see what, what were we, where were we traveling in 2002? So it says National Geographic Traveler, five blissful islands and the best of each. All right. There's a good looking Jeep Grand Cherokee. Hold on, let me just move this up here. Jeep Grand Cherokee, still the best insurance policy out there. Sorry, I didn't mean to make a noise at you, but I didn't think my microphone was on. <laughs> and if I do that, I can really hear it. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll edit that out in post. <laughs> Look at, aw, I love horseback riding. I haven't done that in a long time. The only time I've ever done it is like... You know, when you go out west and go to national parks, sometimes they have stables and you can ride horses like in Teton and stuff. But I do love it. <laughs> Although one time we went in Michigan, there was a place called Bald Mountain and they had all these horses and you could just take them. They didn't have guides or anything and you were just like, <laughs> um, you know, walk the horses around the area they had and I thought that was cool because I'd only ever been guided tours with horses and I remember going with my sister and her at the time boyfriend and they I think what happened they tightened up his saddle but the horse must have like sometimes they'll expand their lungs so that it won't be too tight so after you walked them out a little bit, if you started to head towards the barn, the horses would take off like at a full run to get back to the barn, <laughs> which is kind of intimidating if I'm honest, but his, the saddle just came loose and he starts going around the side and he was like hanging on for dear life. Anyway, so that's my horse story. <laughs> All right, let's see, March 2002 features the other Caribbean, the Lewis and Clark Trail, on location, great film destinations, I bet New Zealand will be one, a ramble in Wales, sounds beautiful, Glacier National Park, that is beautiful, been there, place of a lifetime. This is St. Mary's Lake in Glacier National Park. Um... I'm pretty sure this is a lake where there is a lodge that is right like here. <laughs> so you look out at that view and we, my three sons and my husband and I took the train from Chicago um, out to Glacier, but because train travel is notoriously slow, which was fine because we had a great time, but it didn't pull into Whitefish, Montana until... I think it was like 1.30 a.m. And I was worried because I'd rented a car and I, you know, had emailed. I mean, this was probably around this time, honestly. I had emailed with the car. I guess I called them maybe and said, I don't know what to do. We're not arriving till late. And they said, oh, don't worry. The key will just be there. And so we pull up at the train station and like literally there was just a key on a hook. <laughs> and you grab it and go get the car, which I thought was so you know, coming from where I come from, they wouldn't trust people like that. <laughs> but anyway, so we drove out to this lodge and it was so dark and I knew because I had booked the place that this was the view, but the kids didn't know and everybody was so tired. So we just went in and went to bed and I'll never forget the next morning, my boys woke up and they were, you know, young and they opened the curtains up and they all just started going, like they were in 
awe. It was such a beautiful view. They'd never seen anything like this. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. And even though we were only in that room for like maybe seven hours, <laughs> it was worth the cost because just hearing them wake up that morning is a memory. Rollerblading. I have a story about that, but I just told a story, so I won't. <laughs> Winter warmth in Paris. I want to go to Paris. Canada, come play a world away. These are all just like about the people writing the articles. Nature Valley. I do like the crunchy ones. <laughs> Caution. Unsafe for film. New airport security procedures. Now remember, this is 2001. Let's see, it's March. No, 2002, sorry. So in September of 2001 is when 9-11 happened. And this is March, so we're pretty soon after that. So they say new airport security procedures make it harder to protect photos from harmful x-rays. Here's how you can save your shots. So they're showing her looking at all the film. Oh, look. Forget the film. Here's all you need to go digital. And they have picture it publishing platinum, which you'd move your photos onto digital. Talking pictures, what? <laughs> Fujifilm, this versatile digital camera not only offers the usual features of 2.4 megapixel camera, it also records audio files, 30 second sound bites. Wow. <laughs> Snap printer. Printing your own photos can be time consuming and ink cartridges are expensive. Well, that hasn't changed. <laughs> For professional quality prints of your digital pics, contact this site to get them for as little as 49 cents per 4x6. I feel like, you know, hardly anybody's printing photos anymore, and so they're putting them up on social media, but I wonder if, you know, what will happen in 30 years if, like, you that social media goes out of business or something are all those photos just gonna be I guess a lot of them are in the cloud but like my cloud storage filled up ages ago I don't do anything about it streaming video I had one of these I think I had this exact camera in fact I think my son he is a video I guess he's a videographer he's an editor really but he does use this to create interesting film <laughs> music videos <laughs> I don't know. Sony smaller than a VHS camcorder this digital cam plays your footage back on your TV or lets you transfer to a computer yeah they had these like little VHS tapes in there and so you'd have to like transfer it onto a regular VHS tape it, it this I still have all the little tapes and I have to plug in this to watch them <laughs> Dumb and dumber. Please don't pet the bison, swim near the waterfalls, or rely on your cell phone to save you in the national parks. You know, I tell you, there is a, um, like an Instagram called Tourons of Yellowstone, and it's all these moron tourists. And I have seen it with my own two eyes in the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone, where people are just... Uh, in the Grand Canyon, people, there is this spot where you can take pictures, and there's a gate, and I'm, this goes back to the 90s, so I don't know if it's still true, but it's like, hold on, let me get it. Wait, where's my, hold on, sorry. This is important. I have to tell you this story. <laughs> so it's like the Grand Canyon's like this, and there's a viewing area here, and then maybe there's a viewing area here. And there's a gate and the gate says don't be stupid and then there's a teeny tiny little bit of rock that is you know a little bit of uh, I don't know 
what I'm trying to say. It's part of the Grand Canyon, and it kind of comes out like this. But there's a big gate here, and they tell you on that sign how many people have fallen in. And there is always, and I don't know if this is still true, but there used to always be people standing out here to take photos. <laughs> and they have to walk across here, and people fall in. <laughs> and when you live in in the area, like I lived in Phoenix, and we used to get a newspaper, and at the beginning of the newspaper, they'd have, like, what's going on locally. And I swear it was every month somebody fell into the Grand Canyon. I mean, it happens all the time, and people are <laughs> not very smart. And the other thing people do in Yellowstone, I'm going to draw you a bison. <laughs> Here he is. Oh, <laughs> that's how he looks. And they got, like, big old horns. <laughs> and they'll be minding their business. And people come up with their cameras, and they get closer, and they get closer. And then this guy goes, and kills them. And they go, I wonder why that happened. So yeah, in the national parks, be careful. Where cherry trees bloom, Washington, D.C., Kyoto, Japan. I'd like to go to both of those. I've been to Washington, D.C. a ton of times, but I don't think I've ever been when the cherry trees are in bloom. Antarctica, lowest temperature recorded, negative 129 Fahrenheit. Don't know what that is like. <laughs> a flap over flipper. Caribbean islands are rushing to accommodate tourists dying to swim with dolphins. But are the dolphins dying? That makes me sad. I don't want that. When my son, he, I told you, he went to college for a semester in Hawaii. And when he lived there, the beaches are public, so he can walk on any beaches. So he did a lot of, he's a hiker, you know, and a runner and everything. So he did a lot of hiking on the beaches that were less traveled. And there is an all-inclusive resort that is on one of the islands. And he was walking behind it. And he could see, like, the little pool where they kept all the dolphins when they weren't out being petted by people. And he's like, it doesn't look good at all like that makes me sad <laughs> don't like it uh, let's see satellite phones you dial a calling plan and they tell you you can use satellite phone callback service global mobile phone prepaid calling cards so before there was much um, cell phone Big build up in Baja. Costa Rica. I was supposed to go to Costa Rica and then the um you know the events of twenty twenty happened and all the we couldn't go. I mean it happened like the day of the lockdown. <laughs> we were supposed to fly out. Humans meet gray whales at Magdalena Bay, where ecotourism has scored a relative success. So that's off of Baja Peninsula in California. Norway. That would be cool. What is this called? Norwegian Coastal Voyage? <laughs> Come and go clean. <laughs> uh, this is before everything in there saying sanitizers, nose sprays and other strategies to ward off the germs that cause colds and flu. <sighs> A new look at Florida classics. Yum. I want food. I want that. I want this whole thing. <laughs> look how cute that guy is. islands beyond the mainstream the other Caribbean what do you think they're going to talk about what, what will be the five I can't I mean are they 
anymore. They're probably so popular now. Let's see. Down Granada Way. Yeah, I think Granada is a regular stop now. Open armed welcomes are a natural gesture, especially for U.S. visitors, since Grenadians believe that the 1983 invasion by U.S. troops rescued their island nation from political turmoil. All in one island. Looks beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that waterfall. What is it about waterfalls? It's something about like the breeze and the. It probably puts off extra oxygen or something. I don't know, but it just makes you feel like. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> All right, I haven't heard of this. Marie Galante. I ain't heard of that. Island of Sugar Mills. Mm, I have some thoughts about the Sugar Mills. But okay, I admit I haven't heard of these. Bequia? Never heard of that. And Bequia. Oh, is this all in Granada? Maybe this is all part of it. Culebra, the Spanish Virgin. Learning to navigate the islands from the inside. Throw away the clock. <laughs> Respect names. When someone is introduced to you with their family or last name, always call them by their appropriate title, Mr., Mrs., Doctor, etc., and family name. Don't use first names until invited to, which may happen quickly. Huh. Okay. Preserve resources. Accept closeness. Standing in line at the airport, you feel someone's breath on your back. <laughs> Chatting with a local, you keep backing up, trying to put some space between the two of you. When giving you change, a clerk puts the coins right in your hand, not on the counter. Oh, that one phase. Most Caribbean people are more physical than North American. Hmm. Interesting. Saba. The Beachless Wonder. Hmm. I've never heard of any of these. <laughs> Interesting. A Dutch dependency, Tiny Saba, contributes one soaring landmark to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the realm's highest peak. Okay. Here they show you where they are. So like here, St. Thomas and St. Croix, and here is Culebra, and Saba, and Marie Gallant, and Piquia, and Granada. Huh. Well, interesting. Lewis and Clark, Trouble on the Trail. Garbed in traditional Nez Pierce dress, typical of Lewis and Clark's era, Indians go for the kind of trail ride that bicentennial visitors might love. But when it comes to heritage tourism, only a few tribes are ready, and some aren't even willing. Well, I could understand that. So is this the Lewis and Clark do's and don'ts of the Lewis and Clark trail? Huh. I think there's like a documentary that I watched at least part of. It may have been Ken Burns, I don't know, about the whole Lewis and Clark. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. That was a long time ago, but it was pretty interesting. So St. Louis, Omaha, up through South Dakota. North Dakota. What happened here? <laughs> and then they did some crazy stuff. Canoe camp. Bonneville Dam. And out here to Fort Canby. Maybe I'll have to research Lewis and Clark a little bit and learn about that. It's I used to know more, I feel like. Like there was a documentary probably came out in 2000. It was probably on PBS or something. 
I haven't watched it in a long time, I don't remember. On location, 50 great film destinations. Energy is everything in Rio, the setting for Black Orpheus, the 1959 Marcel Camus film shot here during Carnival. The boy warms up to take part in events, Samba Schools Parade. In the events. All right, where do we have? A hiker loses himself in mournful Glencoe Valley, near where scenes for Braveheart were filmed. Parts of Highlander, starring Sean Connery, were shot in the lower Glencoe Valley. Okay, but where is it? <laughs> Let's see, where do they say Braveheart? This film about Scottish freedom fighter Sir William Wallace, who died in 1305, was shot largely around Glencoe and Glen Nevis in the western highlands of Scotland. Wow, pretty cool. Look how beautiful, rugged. All the President's Men, Washington, D.C., Amadeus in Prague, um, The Big Easy, New Orleans, The Alamo, San Antonio. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love Devil's Tower. <laughs> and so often if you get there early, it's all like this. It looks all foggy and then it kind of clears. I don't know what it is about it. It's like so cool. <laughs> I mean, it's like a half, you know, you don't, unless you're climbing or something, you can do it in a couple hours just while you're driving through. <laughs> but I love it so much. <laughs> Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Wyoming, City Slickers, New Mexico, oh, Casino, Las Vegas. The Commitments in Dublin. That was, I feel like that was a good movie. It's been a long time since I saw it. Crocodile Dundee, Australia. Serrano de Bergiac in Dijon. The capital of Burgundy. Death on the Nile. That's the original in Egypt. Look at this. The Temple Bar in the heart of one of Dublin's oldest neighborhoods is a favorite with artists. There are more than 20 galleries in the area. The city was an ideal setting for the commitments which chronicled the life of a band that now bills itself as the Gorilla of Soul. I want to go here. I want to go to Temple Bar. <laughs> so this, I wonder if it's still um, like an artist area. The Irish music here. <gasps> that sounds so fun. <laughs> How do I get here? Where where do I have to go? <laughs> How do I make this happen? My family's... I used to think they were all British. But my sister... Well, a couple of things. I We've done more research and now realize there's more like Scots-Irish in our family. And then my sister did one of those... What do you call those? genealogy things and found out we have quite a bit Irish so now I feel like I need to go to Ireland <laughs> go to the homeland <laughs> hmm well that looks like fun wait a minute let's go back to the commitments where where are they they're in Dublin is that where this is though do, 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 do. Uh, to sample the city's current music scene go to Temple Bar and re Vitalized historic district in the heart of Dublin. Is it still nice, you guys? Anybody been here? <laughs> I want to go. Field of Dreams in Iowa. Gandhi in Delhi. Gettysburg. Well, I'm glad to hear they actually filmed that near Gettysburg. Uh, but to do, do Harry Potter throughout Britain. Indiana Jones. In Petra, Jaws at Martha's Vineyard. Uh, 
Legends of the Fall, Vancouver, The Lord of the Rings. The hillside was recreated partly at New Zealand's Lake Alta. I have heard that so beautiful. Mm. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, Savannah, Georgia. The Golden Pond in New Hampshire. A river runs through it, Montana. Salzburg, Austria. A ramble in Wales, an elderly woman encountered on a mountain hike shares the wisdom of a lifetime. All right, I'll share with you her wisdom. So, they met this old woman on a walk in the mountains um, and he said what's the secret to a long and happy life and she answered moments and there was a quiet pause then the old woman smiled squinted at my father and spoke slowly moments are all we get a true walker understands this there's some truth to that I think when you're out walking without any devices or any distractions and you just kind of stop and take in the sounds and there are these moments yeah all right glacier national park is beautiful so what happens in glacier there is a road right here called the going to the sun road and it travels between west glacier and saint mary and when we took the train, we arrived in Whitefish. Yeah. So we drove out and stayed. So earlier I said we were on that lake, but I guess we were actually on Lake McDonald, but the view looked very similar. Anyway, I think we stayed right here. And my friend who lives out here, she was driving this way. So we were going to meet up at, I think we had some cabins right here somewhere. But the road does not open until they can plow it, which happens sometimes like mid-June. Well, for some reason, there it had been extra cold that year. And the road, <laughs> the day we needed to go was the first day it was open. Like, we got so lucky <laughs> that we were able to go up here and meet up with her. And so we met up. So we spent a night here, and then we spent some nights at cabins. And she and I and the kids were hiking around I think it was this area but anyway but I tell you there are grizzly bears all over the place <laughs> like this one hike we were about to go on we see a grizzly bear walking across and we're like okay nope <laughs> we'll go this other way but then we were on this actually we were up at this many glaciers I think boy I can't remember now it's all anyway it's beautiful, beautiful, but lots of bears. <laughs> we saw them. We definitely saw you. Oh, yeah, here's going to the Sun Road. Lake McDonald, yeah, it's gorgeous up there. There he is. We saw him. <laughs> and, and all his friends. Yeah. Backpackers. I'd be, I'd actually be scared to backpack up there just because of the grizzlies. I, I have a fear of grizzly bears for sure. Um, whitewater rafting. Oh, wow. Look at that. He's biking through there. It's beautiful. Cruise Upper Waterton Lake in Canada. Yeah, Glacier has like a Canadian side and a U.S. side. The Prince of Wales Hotel. Yeah, someday I'd like to go back and go up there, I think. Fort Jefferson in the Dry Tortugas. I haven't been here. My sister went not that long, I don't know, probably five years ago or so, and said it was really cool. But the day they went, it was so hot. They said they were just dying from the heat. It's like at the tip of Florida, down past the Florida Keys, and there's this fort, and you have to either 
take a boat or they have like I think they have small planes that go out here ports of call Boston Marathon yep I only point out my son's going he's running in a different marathon but his best friends running in the Boston Marathon so he's going he was telling me I should go but I don't think I'll be able to make it so Virginia Arts Festival that would be fun I love going to arts festivals they're fun I used to show at arts festivals but I tell you it is grueling work really it's fun for a while and then you're like okay <laughs> Kentucky Derby I've never been to that Houston International Festival a chocolate Travel photography workshop. I could use to work on my photography. Glam Dallas goes counterculture. The big D still does big hair and power suits, but this style is giving way to some new edge to some edgy new action. What do they mean? Dallas sites? Is that what you call people from Dallas? Dallas sites? <laughs> find a lot to smile about at the year old women's museum dedicated to the influential women in all fields and a symbol of the city's new cultural progressiveness okay polynesia Traditional Polynesian dancing banned as too provocative in the 1800s by French missionaries is again a top attraction in Huahain. Huahain. I've never heard of it. Wow, there are a lot of places I need to learn about. Pacific Pluperfect. <laughs> Hua. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it looks like Huahain. Coral ringed lagoons and green peaks rival those of chic Bora Bora, but the crowds are absent. What? I have to find out all about this. That does look cool, doesn't it? Look at that. Techies in the wilderness. Eco gadgets give a high tech spin to the enjoyment of nature at the innovative Canadian Ecology Center in eastern Ontario. Night vision. Birth of a resort town. It may not be Aspen, but Glenwood Springs, Colorado has other assets. Hot Springs has other assets. Hot Springs Caves and its share of noteworthy history. Hmm. Glenwood Springs. Anybody been there? <laughs> oh. Worldwise. Although Buddha statues above abound in Thailand, the world's largest Buddha is located on Mount and Mai in what Asian nation? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody will have to tell us. I could look at the... I'll wait. I'll wait. To look. What American city served as the set for the film Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? Oh, we read that one. New Orleans. No. It was, um, no, it was, it was, <laughs> it was, um, I just said it, not Birmingham, what was it? Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. The characters of English poet Geoffrey Chaucer made a pilgrimage towards what city? The characters of English poet Jeffrey made a pilgrimage to George Woods. The 13 highest mountains in the United States are all located in what state? The 13 highest mountains in the United States. Well, I would think Alaska. 
A cotton robe called a galabia is the traditional dress of Arabs in Africa's northeasternmost country. Name this nation. Glacier National Park's remaining ice fields mostly grew between 1500 and 1850 during what significant period of geologic history? Boy, I feel dumb out of my face. But I do know that I think all the glaciers are almost gone. When I was there, like 15 years ago, they were just about gone. The James River and the Rappahannock River, both in Virginia, flow into what bay? Well, I would think the Chesapeake. In which cardinal direction must a pilot fly across the international date line in order to gain a day? That is, technically, to travel 24 hours back in time. Oh boy. <laughs> South. Name the only predominantly Roman Catholic country in Asia. Name the only predominantly Roman Catholic country in Asia. Um... Would that be um, Malaysia? I don't know. Oh, I feel like I know the answer to that, but my I can't think of it. The abdom. I never know how to say this. The um the uh, sorry. I'm gonna crack myself up trying to say this. I can't believe this word is coming up. Of all the words in the English language that I can't say, this is one of them. The ab. Uh, Abominable, oh, I think I got it, snowman, known also as Yeti, is a mythical creature said to inhabit what mountain system? I think I don't I want to say, you know, the, the, um, where the Mount Everest is, yeah. Yeah, I can't think anything right now. Himalayas, yeah. All right, so the Buddhist, Mount Emma is in China, American City. We looked that one up, so that was easy. Wait, what? Oh, number two, this one. I read them out of order. Whoops. Cotton dress, that's Egypt. Oh, yeah, we knew that. Okay, G Glacier National Park, Ice Field, the Little Ice Age. I didn't know that. Savannah is where the Midnight of Garden Evil. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey Chaucer. They were trying to get to Canterbury. Canterbury? Canterbury, yeah. Okay, because they're the Canterbury Tales. All right, number six, James River flows in Chesapeake. Number seven, they have to fly east to go back in time 24 hours. Okay. Number eight, Roman Catholic country. That's in Asia, Philippines. Number nine, 13 highest peaks in the U.S. in Alaska. And the abominable snowman, I said it twice, <laughs> is in Himalaya mountains. Well, I knew they were Himalaya. I just couldn't come up with it quickly. Expedia. I bet Expedia was brand new when this was made, probably. You've been very, very good. Now go to your room. <laughs> That's cute.